Greetings. Today I am going to put together a Master of Possessions for my Empress Children Army using some of the various parts from my Bits Box and Pile of Shame in an attempt to keep myself sane during lockdown. Now, I had a Master of Possession to start with from the Start Collecting Chaos box set, but I used the body and the backpack for another project or two. So, for this conversion, I had the arms with the weapons readily available and just needed to find myself a body to suit. Luckily for me, I had stocked up a while ago on some single models from the Stormcast Eternals. I think these came with a paint set or a magazine, and their proportions work relatively well with Primaris sized marines. To begin with, I would be removing the right hand holding the hammer. This would come off at the end of the glove before the elbow, as the Master of Possession hand parts I have finish here. To remove this, I use my saw, as the part is too thick for me to use a knife without risking damaging the parts or myself in the process. Once this had been sawn off, it would need to clean with a knife, but before attaching any of the arms, there are a few more adjustments to be done on the rest of the body that would be easier to do without arms in the way. The first of these steps would be to remove the shoulders. These ones are rather large and not particularly fitting with the rest of the army, and by removing these and using some for the Chaos Space Marines cap, it would help to change the silhouette of the model quite drastically. The removal of the shoulders began by taking my clippers and slowly cutting away chunks of the shoulder from the back body piece, taking care around the elbow area as this is most likely to be seen on the finished model. Once the majority of the shoulder has been removed with the clippers, I can then move on to my knife to clean the area up and smooth it out around the visible areas. It helps here to bring in a shoulder pad so you can occasionally check and see which areas need more attention. With that back bit done, I can then move on to the front of the torso. This would again be done mostly with the clippers, but extra care needs to be taken around the front. This part of the chest will be very visible with the model's open arm stance, so once the majority of the shoulder was gone, I took my knife and sculpted around the chest area to extend the shapes already present, before moving on to do the same with the shoulders on the other side, both the back and the front of the torso. With the shoulders taken off, I decided to shorten the back of the collar slightly. Having taken a little off the sides with the shoulders, this would fit in a little bit better and it would also give a little more space for the head to fit, as the Stormcast heads tend to be a lot smaller than those for Space Marines. This was done by taking the knife and gently cutting away a thin section before scraping the area smooth. The next step I took would be to remove some of the iconography on the model. The knee has a lightning bolt symbol that would have to go, which I took off by carefully cutting with my knife, following the shape of the knee and taking it off little by little before scraping along with my knife so we don't end up with a flat area on a rounded knee, because that wouldn't look particularly good. Now, the next bit I did here was to cut some triangles out the edge of the knee pad to making it spiky, as I thought it would look good. However, if I were to do this again, I would skip this step as the effect I had in my mind did not look quite so good on the model. Ah uh, well, you live and learn I guess. To continue with the icon removal, I decided to just shorten the lightning bolts under the belt, so they were less lightning bolty. Taking the knife and then gently snipping them off about halfway up, it would be possible to take them further off, but this would be a lot of effort in comparison to just shortening them a bit. With that done, the last symbol to be removed was on the scabbard. A little scraping was quite enough to get rid of this one. With all those icons removed, we can start looking to putting the model together. First, sticking up the torso together with some plastic glue. It's a pretty simple step here. The next one is adding some glue to the upper arms and the shoulder pads from the Chaos Space Marine set. I only did this on the left side of this point, however, as I wanted to add the hand holding the fiery skull from the Master of Possession kit now. So, taking the drill, I drilled out holes in both the hand and the elbow, as due to the hand having an indent at the back where it was attached to the original model, it would not have a very good surface area for gluing normally, and therefore I am going to be pinning it. Once the hole was drilled, I took a small length of paperclip wire the same size as my hole, dabbed some super glue on the end, this was then inserted into one of the holes, let's set for a second or two before being clipped off a few millimetres protruding. This protruding wire then has the same superglue treatment before being inserted into the other hole on the hand. 
making a nice strong bond between the hand and the elbow. After adding the other shoulder, and before adding on the long staff hand, I figured it best to get the head done. The head I'm planning to use is from the Hell Striders of Slanesh kit. This is a fantastic source for demonic looking human heads, but they do not have much of a neck to them for our Space Marine here. To rectify this, I mixed up a small amount of green stuff putty and made a little ball that's going to be put into the neck hole. And using a damp barbecue skewer, I gently prodded and poked it into a rough neck shape. Once this looks about right, the head can be added and gently pushed into the green stuff before coming in again with the skewer and the back of my knife to shape it a little better. In this case, I wanted to bulge a little around the neck there to mimic the padding around the neck of the bare space marine heads that you get in many kits. Now, to help hide some of the less than ideal areas around the right shoulder and chest area, and also to give another ritualistic looking thing to the model, I took this sausage of green stuff and rolled it flat with my skewer on some aluminium foil. This was left to set for long enough that it was still malleable, but didn't just squish out of shape as soon as you think of looking in its general direction. I'm going to make a scroll with this in a little while. However, whilst this set, I took another bit of green stuff, a ball again this time, and placed it in the center of his back. Space Marines have a big old backpack to them, and that usually sits on a raised section around this area. We do not need to be the neatest in the world here, as this thing is entirely hidden, but we do need something there so the pack sits properly. So, a bit of squidging with the skewer to a rough shape, and the backpack could then be pushed onto place. Once this green stuff has set, the pack can then either be left there and hope the green stuff holds forever, or you can gently remove the pack and add some super glue. I remain hopeful in this case. With the backpack having some time to set, I moved on to the other arm. I have here the staff hand from the Master of Possession. Much like the flaming skull hand, this is going to be pinned on. A hole on either side, super glued wire gets his arm on nicely and it is nearly complete. In fact, you could leave this here if you wanted, but I've been losing my mind in lockdown and doing these really helps me out a bit. So I carried on raiding my bits box for stuff. And here is some stuff. I have a banner here from the Hellstriders kit, as my master of possession is a worshipper of Slanesh, and it has a giant symbol on the back. I thought this would do nicely for a fancy cloak to match his fancy armor. It was, however, quite long, so taking my saw, after marking the length with my knife, I chopped off the bottom end of the banner, and then snipped off the spikes at the top. The bottom of the banner could then be roughed up a little, as right now it doesn't look particularly like a cloak. Scraping, snipping and general cutting of the bottom edge to make it look a little warm does this job quite nicely. And with that done, I put a little dab of plastic glue on each of the top points, while sliding it right up under the backpack, with the top bits going underneath the shoulders, roughly to where the arm is, and the glue therefore sticking them in place. Now it's been a little time and the green stuff stripped from earlier were have set enough to use. Taking my knife and wetting the blade will stop it from sticking to the green stuff. And then I could just trim the sides until I had a nice strip that could look like parchment or even cloth. This was then removed from the foil and carefully laid onto the model in an appropriate place. In this case I've gone from the right shoulder area over the chest and covering a little of the knee pad that I didn't much like. This was then gently squished into place at the top of the model with my skewer and also at any other parts where it touched. Obviously not squishing too hard because we don't want to lose what shape we do have on that lovely scroll. Now with that last little bit done, I found him a base, added some basing materials and gave him a good old coat of paint. Whilst there are a few things I would have done differently, namely that knee pad, I really like the way this model turned out in the end. He fits rather well with the rest of my army and it was fun to paint all that tiny scribbles on the scroll. All that's left now is to say a thank you for watching and hopefully you found some inspiration or at the very least enjoyed the video. If you did then consider subscribing for more kit bashes. I do try and get a video done every couple of weeks, work permitting of course. And with that, as always, have a good one all.